eva evaluating outcome. Efficacy versus effectiveness. Now, this is about what we're going to talk about, but from this point on, the rest of your professional life is you're trying to figure out, well, is this research good or not good or, you know, that's a part of learning to be, you know, uh, professional mental health person is, is being able to be skeptical about uh, research and see if it's uh, methodologically sound or not. There's a very big difference between efficacy and effectiveness. Now, efficacy studies are done under very, very rigorous conditions. And what they do here is they, they do, I mean, they do it the right way, basically. They spare no expense in uh, doing very thorough diagnostic workups to rule out all kinds of uh, other disorders, that sort of thing. Uh, they do good patient education. They do very aggressive treatment. And they do, and this is extremely important, they do tight follow-up. They are following these people at least weekly, if not more. Sometimes they'll make, have a midweek telephone call, how are you doing? Now, you know, you might say, ideally, that's what you ought to do, and, and it is, it is, but that does not equal what happens in the real world. And so these efficacy studies then uh, are done in that fashion. The other thing, too, is the selection criteria they use for people they enroll in the studies, which I'll talk about after the break, okay, it is very, very peculiar, and I'll talk about that later. Effectiveness studies look at what happens out in the community, sometimes referred to as uh, treatment as usual, T-A-U, treatment as usual. What are the outcomes in the real world, you know, where patients drop out of treatment or they don't take their medicine every day or, or, or what have you? And, and you can imagine there's a big difference. And when drug reps come to their, talk to their physicians and try to say, hey, this is the best thing since sliced bread, they're going to show them these research studies that look astounding, you know, and the, the wise physician is going to realize, yeah, they're showing me a, their choice of research studies that are efficacy studies, all right? Now, uh, in, in terms of responses, uh, response does not equal remission. And we'll get into the details of this later. If you give an antidepressant to somebody, on average about 50% of people will get at least partial response if, and some will go to full remission. But you never stop there. And so typically if you then go to a second antidepressant or add something, you'll, you'll rescue more people. So the, the point is when you look at research, almost always, almost always, it's one drug versus either no drug or placebo, or treatment as usual, okay? But in clinical practice, it is, it's sequential treatment. If the first thing doesn't work, then you do something, you don't just throw up your hands, you do the next. SSRIs and treating OCD, 65% of people have about a 50% reduction in symptoms. Now there are some people that have more than that, but most people, that's pretty much what you're looking at. Two thirds of people, uh, after about a year of treatment, have about a 50% reduction in their scores on OCD rating scales. And you might look at that and you might say, that doesn't look very good. And it's certainly not stellar, but go ask patients. You cut their, their, their OCD symptoms in half and every single one of these people will say, thank God, because my whole life was centered around this. And yeah, sure, I still have some rituals and I worry about stuff, but for the first time, I, I can have a life, okay? So when you look at like clinical significance, uh, statistical significance, quality of life issues, sometimes the, the figures don't tell the whole story. And then finally, and this is just another way of, of looking at this, okay, aggression, that's hard to treat. And you see aggression uh, occurs in so many different uh, disorders. It occurs in uh, ADHD, bipolar disorder, occasionally in schizophrenia. It occurs in people with developmental disorders, people have post-head injury, and on and on and on, okay? So uh, it, it's not associated with a specific diagnosis, but can be seen as a target symptom that can be, uh, you know, very, very problematic. Whoops, let me go back here. Now, uh, in your book, you're going to read uh, a thing on aggression. It's going to talk about the drugs that can address aggression. None of those are much better than 10% of people get better. Okay, so what you do here in treating aggression is, and this is just an example, 
is you start off typically with the drug that has the lowest side effect profile. You get in there and try to really get aggressive and see if it works. Because if they tolerate it and it works, great. If that doesn't work, then you go to the next one on the list and what you're doing is moving towards drugs uh, that, that carry a, a heavier side effect burden. You, start, you wouldn't start with those. Okay, now it turns out that about 10% of people uh, who have a variety of kind of c causes for their aggression respond to high doses of beta blockers. The point I want to make is this. 10%, that does not look very good at first glance. But for the guy that that works, it may keep him from killing his wife. Okay? So you hold up, oh, that isn't, that's not very impressive. But if you systematically go through things and you say, yeah, but maybe in group studies, yeah, 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 only 90% you know, of people don't respond. But by God, these 10% of people, it's a lifesaver. And you know what? And, and this, is this any different than you see in any other branch of medicine? No, it's not. You know, lots of chronic medical illnesses are not about cure. They're about reducing suffering, uh, prolonging life, things like that. And so are the psychiatric drugs. And then you probably already saw this, but if you can't read it, it says, I think the dosage needs adjusting. I'm not nearly as happy as the people in the ads. And, and this is something, this is the last slide, then we'll do our break. Uh, this is something that is addressed in almost no research studies. And, and we're going to see that it's a big dang deal. Because especially with mood disorders, you can get marked improvement, okay, with some people. But they'll tell you, but you know what? I just don't feel good. Yeah, I'm not suicidal. No, I can go to work. I'm sleeping through the night. I'm not losing uh, weight. But you know what? Life just isn't the same. And it's because the measuring instruments that they use rarely address these issues. And this is a big problem with the bipolar medications that just zone people out. Just, just take the edge off of their, their aliveness.